we are going to be talking about section 12.1, which is going to be covering something called integrals. Another word for this is antiderivatives. Antiderivatives. So, so far what we've been doing is that we've been finding derivatives, and now what we're going to do is that we're going to be working backwards. So, sometimes what happens is that a company already knows their marginal revenue or their marginal cost. What they want to do is that they want to work backwards and derive a formula to find their revenue or the total cost. So, let's start looking at this. So, for example, let's say that we know that y equals x to the third. Okay, another way of writing this is that f of x equals x to the third. So if we take the derivative of this function, we're going to have f prime of x, which sometimes we also call dy over dx, which we also sometimes call y prime, is going to equal 3x squared. Now, if instead of writing dy over dx, we write something like this, 3x squared dx, what we're saying is we're saying, okay, that little notation is asking us to find the antiderivatives. What this is, is it's also called an integrand or integral. All right, what this piece here, dx is, is that is the variable that we're taking the antiderivative with respect with. So here, we can see that that's dx. So you can kind of think, if you multiply both sides of this by dx, you would have dy equals 3x squared dx. So when we take the integral of this, what we're doing is that we're saying, hey, who does this derivative belong to? Well, that derivative belongs to the function x to the third. Now, we can check our work by taking the derivative of that function. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we took the derivative of x to the third, we would see that we did in fact get 3x squared. Now here's the issue. If I took the derivative of let's say x to the third plus 5, that also has a derivative of 3x squared. So how do we come up with a way of saying that the antiderivative of 3x squared dx could be any function like x to the third plus or minus some sort of constant right here? Well, to do that, anytime we take the antiderivative, we are going to write, whoops, we are going to write that it's going to be some kind of function like x to the third plus c where c is some constant. All right, now before we start moving on to looking at um, more complicated examples and things like that, let's go ahead and just write down some basic derivative rules. So let's see some basic derivative rules, basic antiderivative rules. So antiderivative rules. So the first antiderivative rule is that if we're taking the integral of x to the n dx, well, let's think of this. When we take the derivative of this function here, what we're doing is that we're subtracting one from the exponent after we bring it down in front. So first you bring the exponent down in front, then you subtract one from it. When we're taking the antiderivative, we want to do the opposite. So what we're going to do is that we're going to add one to the exponent and divide by the new power. And don't forget, we're always going to add c. The second derivative rule is that if you're multiplying some sort of function by a constant and taking its antiderivative, what you can do is you can take that constant and move it out in front, just like we did with derivatives. So constants, you can just move them out in front and don't worry about them. The third rule is that if you're taking the antiderivative of, say, two functions, f of x plus g of x, what you can do is that you can take the antiderivative of 
each function individually, like so. So I wish we were a director, and I do. Note that if you do this, you only have to add one constant to the end of your solution. So what we're going to do is that we are going to do that in the next video.